uh, how many how many students are working with you now from bangladesh is there any oh so from bangladesh um, i just i had one uh, who just finished recently um mm. no actually two so they finished uh, yeah sort of phd uh, look like right now uh, the new ones i don't have any new mm. and nowadays uh, looks like our universities who are, you know they are classifying uh, the universities from where they are graduating uh, mm -hmm. so they want to take students who are completing their uh, bachelor's or masters from uh, the so called you know top 500 in the world right. um, i think i recently inquired uh, looks like they uh, they primarily recognize university of dhaka uh. from bangladesh for others they they are cutting some marks which whatever they got they reduce saying that mm -hmm. unrecognized institute Oh, that's the biggest problem. But uh, what is your comment that how they are sincere and how they are doing this? It was doing. They are uh, were sincere or they were not. Yeah, actually, to me, a you know, number of students who applied from other places, including Ibas and all, they did very well. Um, okay, Muttalib sir, if you allow, we can uh -huh. start, please, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, may I request our reporter to uh, uh, start the session with the introduction of uh, the session chair and the uh, keynote speaker, please. Thank you, sir. Distinguished keynote speaker, respected session chair, moderator, the valuable authors and participants. Assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon. I am Shamima Islam. And with me, Arnab Kanti Tarovdar, are hosting you in this online session D1K3. I am delighted to welcome you all at this keynote session to be delivered by Rajkumar Buya. This session will be chaired by Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Muttalib, Dean, School of Science and Engineering, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh. We have 35 minutes for presentation and around 10 minutes for discussion. And we'll provide a reminder five minutes before the end of speech. May I now hand over the session to Honorable Professor, Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Muttalib, sir. Thank you all. Thank, thank you so much. So uh, let us welcome uh, Professor Raskumar Buya, who uh, has a long, actually, uh, relationship with Bangladesh. And he has really a big uh, contribution in the field. Dr. Uh, Raskumar Huya is going to present uh, his keynote speech on neoteric frontiers in cloud and ACE computing. So this is the really ACE computing is now ACE on the computing area. Now I want to just, uh, I don't want to go through this abstract and other thing because uh, Professor Huya is going to introduce that one. I want to introduce Professor we are because he has really uh, this uh, big back, great background that I want to just introduce you a little bit. Dr. Raskumar Buya is a Redmond Barry Distinguished Professor and Director of Cloud Computing and uh, Distributed System Laboratory at the University of Melbourne, Australia. He is also serving as the founding CEO of Manzra Soft, a spin-off company of the university, commercializing its uh, innovation in cloud computing. He has authored over 850 publications that we can guess uh, how active he is, and seven textbooks, including Mastering Cloud Computing, published by Macro Hill, China Machine Press, and Morgan Kaufman for India. Chinese and international markets, respectively. I have a still a book uh, on this uh, content uh, content management uh, uh, written by him. And long back, basically, I got that book. So uh, actually, we met him also in uh, 2008, probably in Khulna. So Dr. Vuya is one of the highest cited authors in computer science and software engineering worldwide. You see, you can guess with this. Uh, Ace Index 138, uh, really adorable. This uh, 
Z index is 307 and citation is more than one lakh. A cytometric analysis of cloud computing literature by German scientists ranked Dr. Huya as the world's top cited author and the world's most productive author in the cloud computing. So we can guess from the here that uh, how uh, he is doing good and uh, is so uh, sincere in this uh, field. Dr. Huya is uh, recognized as Web of Science highest cited researcher for five consecutive years, bravo, bravo, since 2016. Uh, is a IEEE fellow, Scopus researchers of the year 2017 with excellence in innovative uh, research award by elsewhere and the best of the world in computing science field by the Australian 2019 research <laughs> review. So we can we can guess that uh, we can understand that uh, he is doing really is dedicated and working a lot. There are so many other points they ha he has. So I think from his uh, uh, we can we can see uh, this from his university side. I think you can get many more things is uh, uh, working with this IEEE and uh, so many things. So I want to welcome, please welcome Dr. Raskumar Huya. So for, for his uh, wonderful presentation, welcome to Dr. Raskumar Huya. And you can start your presentation on this uh, neoteric, uh, neoteric frontiers in cloud and ACE computing. It will be really wonderful uh, presentation, and we can guess with this this S computing means really he is in the S apex of the computing area. So uh, please please welcome him, and uh, uh, I'm handing over to Dr. Raskumar Huya to start his presentation. Sir, salam alaikum. Okay. This is Sir Halwasen. Salam alaikum. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Good Thank afternoon. you very much for. Uh, inviting me uh, for your conference. It is highly, uh, you know, uh, privilege for me to be joining with all of you today uh, virtually. I wish, uh, you know, I would have loved to be in uh, there in person. I was indeed looking forward uh, for that and planned. And of course, now things have changed. No problem. And we'll plan in the future in person. Thank you. You can see my slides, right? Yes, yeah. sir. We can, we can okay. see that. Thank you. Um, so let me present brief outline. I will briefly introduce you, you know, how different computing paradigms have uh, emerged. And uh, we'll take a look at uh, especially cloud and its computing uh, driven by uh, some of the recent applications from uh, domains like AI and healthcare. Uh, especially, I'm going to discuss a few more on AI or internet applications and healthcare only applications. Then I will briefly touch on uh, the uh, various uh, uh, challenges that are presented uh, uh, by applications, by uh, newer technologies, uh, how cloud computing architecture need to fulfill or extend it and enhance further. Uh, then I will discuss about uh, a platform called Aneka, a cloud application platform. So that is commercialized by our company called Microsoft. So we'll take a look at few application case studies, then briefly look at this internet of things and uh, the new computing paradigms that are uh, you know, recently, uh, you know, progressing to support, you know, second generation IoT applications. So then we'll conclude at the end. Okay, so as we all know that, uh, you know, from 1960s to now, so various kinds of computing systems are introduced, uh, starting with the mainframes in 60s and moving all the way towards now cloud as a computer. Uh, so, which provides a virtualized capability, uh, you know, users can subscribe to this uh, computing capability or application capability, uh, use it and pay for what they consume. So, this is a subscription-oriented service what cloud offers. That means cloud computing or computing has become utility, just like water is a utility, electricity is a utility, gas is a utility, and telephone is a utility. As a consumers, we don't need to own any of that infrastructure. We simply subscribe and use it and we pay for what we consume. So that is the model, conceptual model. 
so this is where cloud comes into picture but, and as we move ahead you know by 2030 in 10 years time you will see massive deployment of internet of things that is uh, everything become part of internet not just computers so as a result uh, you will see the need for having even more better computing model uh, whereby we can continue to provide reliable services and services with the real time uh, quality of service requirement so that's the way this notion of edge and for computing comes into picture and all these advanced system computing in the past were primarily driven by big scientific uh, problems or applications but now the uh, you know the computing advances is more and more driven by big population uh, you know country like uh, india and bangladesh uh, uh, you know uh, are going to benefit from such application and therefore they are the really drivers for emergence of uh, such a model and then um, uh, here is the high level view of what uh, cloud uh, you know looks like subscription oriented services so what you see is one end you have uh, cloud service providers uh, so they have various compute application uh, storage various capabilities somewhere in the network and we as a consumer we don't need to know where they are physically located so physically they may be in multiple places around the world uh, however users can be in any place they can just subscribe and use them uh, and then just pay for what they consume so therefore it is a meter service they are measuring what you are consuming and then pay for what you consume so you don't have to worry about uh, you know acquiring this facility you don't have to worry about uh, maintaining this facility and managing it and all so that is leave it to the service provider those are called cloud service provider already there are many players in this field uh, including microsoft usually when we think of microsoft we think of uh, windows operating system purchasing from them but that model has changed now you can of course have windows or even linux capability but you don't need to worry about hardware and uh, software application just subscribe and use it and pay for the consume and this applicable to compute services storage services network services or application services even though we may subscribe to a service provider one that doesn't mean that that service provider does everything for you so that provider may in turn be harnessing the capability from other providers and offering a composite service so this is how uh, most cloud uh, services are following this model including for example dropbox is a cloud storage service they harness the storage service from multiple vendors including your own so this is how cloud services are built and of course so this model of cloud computing is you know gained and numerous applications are already uh, successful and we are using in day to day life uh, let me illustrate few so one is uh, the traditional science and business application for example crm customer relations management and erp enterprise resource planning these are very typical uh, software system any enterprise need and in the past it you had to buy spend maybe something like you know 20 lakh uh, rupees and then uh, Uh, which is maybe too expensive for small and medium businesses so however now uh, they are available as a service anyone can subscribe based on your uh, real business requirement you just uh, rent their capability and pay for what you consume so now coming all the way towards this uh, consumer domain applications such as twitter twitter is running on a uh, cloud so it's a micro messaging service very popular uh, the demand on that service can vary with time so that is one of the application then of course uh, these days you know virtual uh, uh, social networks like facebook are running on a cloud multi cloud environment uh, then uh, coming to this zoom that we are using today for our this conference providing almost real time so this is a cloud based video conferencing software so you can see uh, the number of users on this uh, software system can vary with time uh, you know sometime 10000 sometime 5000 sometime 50000 like this number of users are there and uh, so a service provider like zoom application they don't really own the infrastructure they they simply build a software and roll it out and deliver that through application you know uh, this cloud so this is why we see uh, that we are getting very good uh, response time uh, even though the users of this are you know distributed i did saw the conference program there were keynote speaker from different countries then participant from other uh, places as a result but we get a very good uh, response time so this is as a result you can say cloud is really successful and already benefiting numerous applications and meanwhile although cloud has been around last 10 years uh, there are many technological trends that are impacting on how you architect cloud systems uh, to meet uh, the uh, needs of emerging applications such as for example ai artificial intelligence these are very these are very popular so uh, these uh, um, as a result of this new trends and application also the hardware infrastructure is changing 
Say, for example, there are application specific microprocessors are developed like PPUs and so on. So therefore, when you have such changes in the underlying hardware, you need to make sure that your uh, the cloud architecture is able to take advantage and provides a seamless capability to end user application. So you think such as containers and microservices allows you to build highly scalable, uh, you know, applications that are highly reliable. Uh, instead of having a monolithic large application, you have uh, micro microservices. You compose them together and create a new application. So um, then network also network virtualization uh, is now uh, through something called a software defined networks. Uh, so uh, as a result, you can have end-to-end -end service quality and to support mission-critical application. Then security like blockchain. Blockchain is usually associated with the digital currency, but blockchain is also allows you to offer trustable services when you combine the capability from ads and, uh, and cloud computing. Um, uh, now with this uh, COVID-19, um, even though it may not be a solution for dealing with the virus, but this COVID-19 has created a lot of havoc throughout the world. Uh, many cities are still locked down. You know, in Australia, we still, uh, you know, in the lockdown phase, uh, they're relaxation, but still sort of lockdown, which has impacted in livelihood, business. But whatever business is running, economy is running, yeah, thanks to cloud computing and networks, thank cloud computing particularly playing significant amount uh, role. And if you look at the usage of cloud during last eight, nine months, it pretty much doubled. So massive usage. So cloud is, you know, very much helping in that uh, direction, uh, you know, uh, still continuing our activities. So having understood uh, some high level, uh, you know, cloud, uh, you know, philosophy or uh, aim, then uh, applications that are there, then the newer technologies and newer applications like uh, COVID-19. So it is presenting newer opportunity uh, in the cloud computing space. So therefore, let's take a look at briefly how cloud architecture looks like. So again, when we go deeper, at the bottom, you have many physical servers that are interconnected. Um, uh, so these capabilities are made available to end users as virtual machines. Then also for networks that is within a cloud data center and across multiple data centers of cloud computing. So that is uh, virtualized through SDN, software defined and then uh, you know network function virtualization and so on. So this way we can provide end-to-end -end quality of services. So when you go at the top, top users are making a request to cloud for the require based on the requirement. When the request comes in, so let's say there's admission control system, admit requests that are uh, you know legitimate or um, that it can handle. When the request comes in, the system looks into how much resource I got, how much you already promised to other other applications or other users, then can we admit this request and deliver results as by the quality of service requirements of uh, those uh, end users? If yes, once it come in, virtual machine is created, the request is that virtual machine is my physical machine, then you are start offering services. Meanwhile, with time, the application may become very popular, so number of users can grow you know, uh, grow worldwide. When number of users grow world like this, then what do you do? You need to dynamically provision extra resources that are needed to deliver the service to the users as per the quality that is being promised. And if you don't, then that become violation of service that leads to penalty. So therefore we need to minimize that penalty by offering the best services. It requires you to allocate resource, not only within one place, but also geo distributed. So the, the moment you talk about geo distributed, you will have new challenges like how do I deal with the security trust? How do I deal with the, the resource allocation? How do I make my application that can scale elastically across multiple data centers? And whenever there is a, uh, again, when number of users decrease and you shrink uh, the uh, resource that are allocated. So this is called elastic property of cloud computing. Elasticity is the one that makes it unique and the elasticity brings a lot of benefits such as using resources efficiently, then minimizing the cost of computing this way we can deliver affordable services. Plus also um, due to better use of resource, you also have other benefit like energy efficiency. This cloud data centers consume enormous amount of energy. A small scale data center consumes energy equivalent of 25,000 households. In fact, if you look at uh, the energy consumption of cloud data center throughout the world, the combined energy consumption of cloud data center is more than in, you know, India, for example entire India, how much energy electric energy consume, more than that is cloud data center consuming. So it is a significant problem with respect to climate change and so on. So therefore we need to make sure that whatever solutions architecture we got are designed and then algorithm techniques that are there are able to meet these uh, needs. 
So now let me uh, present a cloud application platform called Anika, which using which you can build such elastic application, application that can scale or shrink, expand or shrink as necessary. So, uh, so this Anika is a software that we developed ourselves uh, at Melbourne University, uh, you know, almost 10 to a year ago. Uh, but we made this as a commercial product through this Mandra Soft and has a many unique, unique capabilities that we added as as the field progresses. So it comes with two key components. The first one is SDK, Soft and Development Kit, that contains different uh, ways, approaches, or models for building application like Thread, Task, and MapReduce. You can build your application using one of these, and once you build, you can deploy either an private enterprise cloud or a public cloud or multiple cloud in a seamless manner. So this is how you scale your application uh, thanks to this model of programming and the runtime machinery uh, that uh, helps support it. And when we go deep inside Aneka, what it has is the container uh, service owner architecture. And this provides you many fundamental services using which you build newer models of programming, this thread, task, and produce like that. Many people have done many innovative uh, models of programming that implement on Aneka. Then you deploy as a shared private or public cloud uh, as well. So, so these capabilities are makes it very unique and world first to be able to support multiple model programming across multiple uh, cloud uh, systems. So, so that is very unique. Um, and this Aneka technology, as I said, you know, first released commercially almost, you know, 10 to 10, 11 years ago. But since then, this technology has been enhanced and newer uh, capabilities are provided uh, along with the newer resource management algorithms to meet the needs of newer applications and newer environments. So like if you look at uh, today, 2020, uh, you know, uh, we released the Aneka 5G fifth edition that is uh, primarily demonstrating capabilities of deep learning like EA application, smart star, IoT application. And that is what I will give you some case studies of these uh, two last classes of application. So this Aneka technology, you know, as I said, it work across multiple clouds. So uh, when you work across multiple cloud, uh, each cloud has its own access interfaces. But you don't want to build your application for each and every, uh, you know, cloud environment. You want to just build application, let the underlying platform take care of it. So therefore, we have built various uh, software adapters uh, within Aneka that is able to work with the different, uh, you know, technology, different infrastructures, different mechanisms. So this way, it gives you seamless access to uh, the capabilities. So, for example, if I come to, you know, Bangladesh with my laptop and I want to power my laptop, and you know, if I try to power it using my, you know, Australia in uh, socket, it won't work. It looks like this, whereas in Bangladesh, it looks different, correct? So therefore, I have to bring some kind of adapter uh, to try, you know, to change, uh, so this way I can connect my network, I mean, my, this laptop cable to power it. So similarly, if you go to another country like uh, UK, uh, different, uh, you know, then you go to America, it is different. So similarly, in cloud computing also, because different providers have a different access interfaces, we need such uh, adapter model. So in Anika, we have inbuilt uh, software adapters that understand the underlying system uh, interfaces. Then from user perspective, end users and application developer, they don't have to worry about this. So this way you can minimize the cost of uh, software application engineering. Let me illustrate to our uh, some um, uh, few application. So here are the some representative applications of this Aneka technology running on private public clouds. So first from China so, uh, Railways and second from uh, Indian Space Research and ISRO, then Washington State University. See, Washington State University have done a work on medical data analytics and cloud. When you think of medical data, there are sensitive records, non-sensitive uh, non -sensitive ones. So you want to deploy in a such an environment uh, where uh, sensitive records of application are processed on an enterprise hospital cloud and the non-sensitive ones, no need, uh, no need to worry too much about privacy and so on, you can deploy on a public cloud. So that is what Washington State University in United States did it. So India and stuff, uh, Delhi in uh, India, so they did uh, recently work on this deep learning and I will illustrate some of these uh, as we go along. So first from China, so you know, the high-speed train design involves lots of analysis of design scenarios. So here, when they were doing on a four core server, it was taking a time like four, oh, no, 24 hours to 80 hours, something like four days. And to minimize that time from four days to just two hours, they set up a private cloud using an ACA platform. Then we have a tool called Design Explorer. Using Design Explorer, they're able to compose this application in SPMD, single program multiple data application, and run it on this uh, underlying uh, enterprise network computers. As a result, what took you know, on a single server, big server, uh, four hours, sorry, four days, the same thing they're able to do in two hours. 
Now you might say, if there's urgency, you don't have a time to wait. You might say, hey, I can't wait for two hours. I just have a 10 minute to, you know, to demonstrate my this capability or urgency. So that you can support in ANCA where you can say deadline. So in Design Explorer, you can say deadline is equal to 10 minutes. And in uh, your local resource takes uh, two hours, but you want answer in 10 minutes. So in this case, can we rent extra capability from public cloud? So there are many other such service providers like Amazon, Microsoft, in, in, in India also there are many uh, local providers. So you want to just rent then a marketplace. So therefore you set deadline is equal to 10 minutes and budget is equal to 200 uh, rupees. So like this in real world, you define then accordingly, you know, you the system will select on your behalf. Just like for example, I want to go to from Calcutta to Dhaka, you know, there may be multiple modes. I can take a flight or I can take a charter flight, or I can take a bus, or I can take a walk or whatever. So each one of those modes have got a quality of service. Some you can reach timely in time within one hour, but you have to spend more. But you, if you have more time, you can take a bus. So you just spend very little money, but you can reach, maybe it'll take uh, you know, uh, 10, 15 hour. So like this, so similar model, but here you think you just simply set your requirement, the system does for you. So that is from um, you know engineering, but there are many examples. But let me now turn towards uh, you know uh, healthcare. In case of healthcare, uh, obviously, uh, like there are IoT sensors that can sensor our heartbeat data and various kinds of health uh, you know, data, and we have such a, a sensor, and the data is moved to the mobile phone uh, with an app that captures the data and send it to a cloud where a analytics service can be done. And here in this case, ECG, electric data, uh, you know, analytics analysis software, which is cloud enabled uh, using Aneka and running on this, for example, a public cloud like Amazon. And of course, here also number of, uh, you know, users, patients, their data is collected. Somebody in emergency, you define, oh, I want answer in two minutes for which I'll pay 50 rupees. There might be other user, you know, they are not in hurry. They will say, okay, here is my healthcare data. I just want to know how I'm doing, but I want answer in 24 hours. That person will be probably willing to pay only 10 paisa, correct? So, so, so like this, multiple requests are coming in. The Aneka system is able to provision a right set of resources to ensure that we are able to meet those requirements. Uh, and of course, before you are admitting, you also make sure that whether you can really do within that uh, constraint that users are putting in. Otherwise, they may have to modify a little bit. So such a uh, approach that makes it unique, then able to combine sensing, mobility, cloud, and analytics. So you can see analytics is application. Uh, so depend upon application domain, data domain, you need to have a right uh, application code. So such a thing we demonstrated, you see we connected sensor to person hand and data went to mobile phone from there to cloud and processing is done and results come back. And actually by looking at this graph that you see, there, there are a lot of things you can make up, something like, for example, how many hours a person has slept yesterday night. So like this can be very useful for admission control at conferences. Someone slept for more than four hours, you can admit them. Those who just left uh, an hour or two in a light, so you can give them a rest, you know, ask them to take some uh, uh, some spicy food and take a rest for uh, another 10, 20 minutes, then they can participate in the conference. So so uh, there are many interesting opportunities here uh, with such a model. So this is my, uh, with Aneka, another uh, application with uh, you know deep learning or AI application. When we think of this deep learning, uh, generally we tend to think of uh, you know crunching massive data pattern and find out uh, what is the object. So here, for example, the uh, images or videos are captured by cameras and they're coming in, uh, then uh, they need to be processed in real time uh, to detect uh, if there's anything suspicious activities happening, if something is missing so or, uh, or something, uh, you know, object that you are expecting uh, to detect. So here, this deep learning library is cloud enabled. Cloud enabled means, so in this case, uh, we're using Aneka's task model. So when the request comes in, uh, lots of images, they are processed in parallel uh, across uh, enterprise cloud and public cloud and deliver results in a, in a timely manner. And here is the image in the here bottom, as you see, uh, in a in a computer lab, so there are many uh, you know systems, and then you take image regularly. From that, you can classify what all objects are there. Oh, how many monitors are there, and how many keyboards are there, or how many students are using it, how many are empty, or is somebody you know susp or somebody is stealing a computer. So all this can be read, you know rapidly uh, detected, and then uh, notification can be given to alerted to the right authority to manage or uh, you know accordingly. So this is, you know, it can be used in exam hall also, like during exam period, you know, you, uh, so if there's a big hall, so you can monitor and see if somebody is really following the rules that is expected. So this is an example of AI uh, application. 
then this is my final uh, example this during uh, last uh, nine months uh, you know uh, due to this coronavirus so many people are doing research on different aspect of this including what is the effect of social distancing how to manage contact contact tracing with privacy or what is the progress in vaccine so so many papers 130000 papers within uh, nine months so if you want to just go through all of this we don't have a time so what we did was we applied some machine learning techniques that will mine all this uh, data and present to you based on your filtering that you put uh, your requirement just like a search engine so then it tells you oh here yeah. so if you say oh i want to see what is the vaccine that is suitable in a condition something like 20 degree temperature so today we see vaccine people are saying hey you should have a 30 degree minus 30 degree temperature where you have to store it that is all not feasible in country like uh, bangladesh and india so we need something different so what is the progress like what can be tolerant so like this you want to find out what is the latest state of the art answer so if you do that so this is an example of demonstrating so workflow from beginning data input to the uh, processing side in between so here is aneka used to uh, used to process uh, in parallel uh, all these data analytics and uh, deliver results in uh, timely manner so when you do it on a single server uh, what takes something like 50 minutes or so the same thing you can do it on multiple servers in a cloud that any could uh, provisions for you then accordingly get results within two minutes three minutes whatever that qs uh, requirement is so this is another uh, healthcare application so this Aneka software uh, is, uh, you can download from mandrasoft.com. As I said, this is a you know, spin-up company uh, of Melbourne University. So latest version Aneka is available, evaluation copy. You can click on download and uh, explore. So lots of uh, you know, people are uh, have done such exploration and published many interesting papers and also learned skills uh, as well. So in uh, you know, numerous countries, uh, people are teaching cloud computing courses. For example, uh, you know, in India itself, numerous universities uh, throughout the country are teaching cloud computing subjects, including West Bengal University of uh, Technology, WBT. And they also set up cloud laboratory using our Anika software and uh, able to offer you know, hands-on experience to engineering students. So this way, you're not only good in theory, but also in practice, you know, theory and practice is combined. So, uh, so that is about uh, market-oriented cloud architecture. So now let me briefly uh, uh, you know, discuss uh, IoT. So when we think of IoT, it's all about creating a smart uh, world. So you can see there are numerous applications from smart home to you know, uh, autonomous cars to smart grid. So many of these are there. Um, um, so in terms of IoT application, you know, we, we just saw healthcare application, but that is a cloud-centric IoT application. So, but however, by, you know, in another 2025, in another five years time, the number of IoT availability and the deployment will be increased by 10, 20 fold. Huge number of IoT is like 50, you know, 500 billion objects around the world. And if you try to do cloud-centric analytics for those IoT application, the latency will be a problem. Yeah, the internet will also clog with, the, uh, with too much of load. So to solve that problem, so this idea of edge computing, harnessing the power of capability from the edge of the network rather than the cloud. And there is something called far computing, not only really harnessing edge, but also uh, public cloud as necessary. So this is the is what you see is as a result, the computing capability coming more and more closer to the uh, end users, especially for this IoT application and uh, real time uh, application. And this is very important because if you rely on cloud, uh, remote cloud for any reason, if it is outage, then it can cause a lot of problem. Recently, two three days ago, Google Cloud was out, you know, had a problem. As a I result, so. Many applications they were able to not able to uh, you know really uh, uh, really support. Do we have five minutes or over? Uh, five more minutes, professor. Okay, so I will uh, complete in five minutes. Yeah, so in that direction we developed a software called FogBus. So this provides you a framework for edge and for computing with blockchain embedded. So when we ended blockchain, what we are able to provide is trustable services. So when the data comes in and uh, the, the data are uh, chained and then uh, processed across uh, different uh, resources, then the results come back and you can assure that no one in the, on the pathway has tampered the data or tampered the result. So this is very important to get uh, trustable services, especially in case of healthcare, you can turn on the blockchain or turn off. In our framework, we incorporated just simple uh, you know, blockchain uh, to demonstrate that. And this is an example of demonstration. Here's oximeter collecting health data. 
and then uh, healthcare app running on a mobile phone from there data sent to uh, you know application service on ads or a cloud so we for example demonstrate with sleep apni application as a result when the data is processed we are able to specify whether the the severity of disease is it normal or is it mild or is it uh, you know serious so accordingly one can plan and this is uh, you know combining uh, oximeter uh, you know like raspberry pi for creating ads environment and the iphone uh, running uh, that application and then uh, of course rest of the company capability and here we connected the oximeter data collected and processed on um, you know on a um, from mobile phone process you on this ads devices and the cloud devices and we just came back and this work is actually done by the student who is next, standing next to me so he's uh, from dhaka university of dhaka he did master bachelor there then came here and he finished phd you know a few months ago with me so here is one student from bangladesh you can see yes say this work fogbus involves bangladesh okay so this is my final uh, uh, drones based network system for combating covid-19 so essentially you know in uh, many big big cities multi story building so what we did in uh, delhi is this uh, drone with a thermal camera he is able to go around the multi story building people were requested to come to balcony just to see if anybody has a covid symptom if yes uh, those were detected uh, you know by analyzing the data and then uh, appropriate action can be taken so you just search for this title drone based network system for combating covid-19 pandemic you will see our paper that provide the detailed discussion on uh, how this is implemented what is the open direction with this let me summarize and conclude so there are several computing paradigms have promised this vision of how to make computing as a utility just like subscribe service and today this cloud computing is the one that turned this vision into reality and the many interesting applications are there and uh, in terms of building their applications and minimizing the cost of software engineering our anika software uh, is one of the dominant uh, demonstrating their capability and this software anika is used for many applications and i've just presented briefly two three uh, you know internet of things uh, as i mentioned uh, the so far the focus is on you know cloud centric iot application that is the first generation then when you move towards the next generation is primarily more of harnessing ads cloud in a seamless manner to uh, you know reduce load on the internet and to support uh, you know real time application to learn more about cloud computing here is one mastering cloud computing is american edition to expensive maybe 99 dollar but for india and bangladesh south east asia we have our local edition uh, mastering cloud computing from agrahil that is probably around uh, you know like 100 uh, you know 400 500 rupees very affordable uh, we also have same thing for chinese in chinese language just for 2 dollar so you can see affordability of services is also very important not only capabilities but also this digital books or printed books at affordable price but quality of service is always you know quality here in this case paper quality and all uh, you know varies yeah um with that let me stop here so thank you very much for your, you know hearing patiently and i hope i am on time uh, because already some two rings have come okay so i think i will stop here and here i have provided you my email id and contacts so you can always most welcome to con you know contact me so thank you i'll be happy to take any questions comments uh, any of you got Yeah, you uh, can. Professor Mottalib, uh, sir. Professor Mottalib, sir, your microphone is muted. I made it. Now I forgot to. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Raskumar Bhuiya, for your wonderful presentation with practical uh, examples. Really, <clears throat> we can understand it. Uh, the model you mentioned that is also excellent. That like the other services. this model you are working with this and the uh, ex, uh, ex, this uh, facilities of anika software is well, also really a good one now i want to just uh, open the uh, question answering session it may be around 5 uh, to 10 minutes probably so uh, may i uh, request any of you you can you can ask the question to professor uh, raskumar bhuiya Philip, uh, sir, I I would like to ask uh, a couple of questions. Yeah, so, Professor Ahad. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, thank you for uh, Professor Raj Kumar Bhuiya. You so are it's, still uh, still in Japan, or you have come back to Bangladesh? No, sir, still in Japan. Just <laughs> still in Japan. Please go yeah, ahead. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So in the slide where you mentioned about healthcare and ECG sensor data analysis, we know that I mean uh, 
uh, there are um, uh, lots of issues of machine learning and signal processing, and uh, still the progress uh, to decipher uh, this kind of signals and uh, make it more usable is not done yet, uh, definitely. Uh, and at the same, on the other hand, doctors are not ready to accept our uh, proposals or methods because uh, we do not do as rigorous research as in the medical field to approve anything. So how far you can um, suggest on this point uh, to the doctors to uh, yeah. take uh, your strategy and others? So any comment on that, please? Thank yes. you. Uh, you know, certainly, you know, we do uh, rely on uh, some of the uh, software systems that are there, which are used in uh, real world or developed by medical uh, experts. So these applications are something computer science people don't develop. So it is developed by application experts uh, or application domain like medical people. And we just help them cloud enable and demonstrate that you can do. Um, yes, uh, the trustability can challenge, but there are uh, areas where you can uh, definitely put in practice. So this uh, IoT, you know, uh, then body networks, so rapidly emerging. So I hear that uh, these days uh, people are applying, uh, you know, uh, extensively. Um, and even if you see the uh, like watches that are coming, they already have such a measurement. They measure your heartbeat data, so many data they measure. And using the data, you know, you can actually process, you know, application, you can't uh, run it on the data analytics or machine learning. You don't do it on our watch, but you can do it on a, a remote place uh, that not only takes your real time data, but also your historical data. So based on your historical record. So then certain recommendation can be made. Say for example, simple. Uh, let's say uh, we go from one country to other country at different time. A person is health condition, maybe for example, diabetes or any of this condition. So based on where this person is and how he is leading his life, certain recommendation can be made how to care your health. Correct. Okay. Right now we're in Dhaka. So for you, the best diabetic friendly food is this one, whatever that uh, in Dhaka. And from there you go to another place that is different again. <coughs> so uh, like that. Um, or maybe we are overworking. Correct. So we don't know when to stop. Uh, too much of uh, interconnectivity uh, is causing people to work too harder. So we need to take break. Uh, so so such got healthcare. So um, yes, uh, can we? How much we can trust? So that requires uh, yes, right advances in necessary like as you said, signal processing or uh, you know certified by medical authorities, not by just uh, electrical engineer or uh, computer engineer. Yeah, so wherever it's trustable, we are saying that we can integrate and do this. And so this you can do remotely. You don't have to approach a uh, uh, you know, you know, doctor for every small thing. So with this, your body, that's what doctor do. Even if you go there, they just take your, some of your vital data and look at your history, how you are. Accordingly, they give you some recommendation. Okay, take rest or take this medicine or do this, do that, correct? That's what they do most of the time. So that same thing we can do ourselves, that's the idea. So in fact, I'm you... using this one for my sleep, yes. uh, this disturbance issue. So, yeah, exactly. But, uh, but at the same time, uh, I mean, uh, the progress on the different domains, uh, the like uh, sleeping or others, others. I mean, signal processing uh, community or AI community can explore much more. Yeah. Anyway, thank yes. you so much. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, is there any other question or comment? Sir, I do have one. Uh... Comment. Please go ahead, Professor Rajak. Uh, thank you, Professor Raskumar Bhuya, for responding us uh, to share your thoughtful comments and experiences with our young scientists and audience. I just oh, wondering, uh, but to see that uh, even though we have seen a significant flourishment uh, in providing computation as a service in cloud computing for for computing as computing platforms, but still business community is expressing much concern on the trustworthiness of the platforms. So could you please hi highlight on the trustworthiness of the computational platforms or the, on the software trust as a service? Trustworthiness. Trust. Trust. Huh. Yeah. Yes. So yes, uh, you know, um, uh, so if you can trust an application running on your server and you can trust the result that uh, that uh, delivers, uh, obviously we can trust in cloud also. But the, in cloud environment, our concern is, oh, I moved data, data is, can we assure data integrity? 
uh, if that is the concern or maybe privacy the concern oh i don't want to move my data because of sensitive reason so yes this is a definitely concern uh, as a result more and more people are working on how to do privacy aware computation or something called as encrypted computation you encrypt your data and then uh, it goes all the way and compute on the encrypted data so then you can be rest assured that nobody has uh, decrypted uh, uh, that uh, that one so and then third one is like i mentioned this uh, for example embedding blockchain into it so all the way from data collection towards processing so and then coming results back so you just want to make sure that nobody during the pathway or anywhere has tampered the result because this is very important these days you know people are taking some kind of sample and processing and they tell you whether a covid positive or negative or whatever correct if they give you false answer you know uh, person may be perfectly okay But if they, oh you are tested covid positive and sometime out of fear people think oh out of their fear itself they die correct so we need to make, uh, it is okay to pay some extra price uh, but to get right answer yeah so, thank you very uh, much yeah. thank you very much professor yeah yeah what's that sir sir your microphone okay again yeah. yeah okay so is there any other uh, any other comment or question So, uh, Professor Mutahar is yeah, Professor uh, Professor Mutahar, Mutahar Mutharul from United International University. Please. Thank you, thank you, sir, for giving me the floor. Uh, I would like to, I mean, convey my heartfelt thanks to uh, Professor Asmaul Bia because I actually went through some of the, I mean, research paper written by you since 2010, and I think you are the pioneer in the field of cloud computing. so although i am not directly involved in cloud computing i have some research work in this field so uh, you know nowadays people are thinking of the i mean uh, cloud for the internet uh, internet of things or the sensor based cloud so uh, i have a few theoretical work for example we have considered the sensor network and based on the sensor network solely based on the sensor network we will deploy a cloud model and we will deploy different type of services so uh, the problem here is uh, for the cloud networking concept we can use the traditional operating system we can deploy the vm but what about the sensor network for example we need to deploy i mean uh, design a, an operating system first and in that operating system we need to deploy some vm or for individual applications so do you think that it is actually a realistic approach and yeah when you go is, to yeah please go ahead if it if it is realistic approach then how we can proceed because designing a uh, for example hy hypervisor for the sensor it is it is really difficult because sensor network is a very tiny uh, our resource constrained device so i need your i uh, guideline in this perspective thank you i agree with you uh, this uh, you know if you go for the traditional uh, uh, you know they already uh, resource constrained very low compute capability uh, so therefore do we apply this virtualization model uh, to there so not too much perhaps uh, what we need is like a lightweight this is where the containers comes in picture so not the virtual machine the lightweight microservice uh, so just a small container uh, services because usually a sensor is designed for it for designed for a particular you know capability uh, sensing certain data of type of certain type of data and analyzing and then making decision or whatever so they are using microservices is the way to go so that is why these microservices uh, is getting popular uh, at the more and more close towards sensor networks and also towards the edge then other standard cloud they can use because in in standard cloud uh, they have a stable power uh, mm -hmm. the the servers are very powerful uh, or you can afford to put powerful ones there but in a real world field you know has to be you know uh, like a tiny uh, uh, with resource constraint so what is real in reality so not the whole cloud architecture model or cloud approach but what do you need to have a lightweight version like a microservices then somehow they just network among themselves using lightweight protocol and only uh, transfer event of interest towards cloud or wherever analytics need to be done so in this regard do you have for example you have developed different uh, platform professor, for example professor motahar yes, uh, could you please write to him because we are running out of time 
Uh, may I request Professor Motalib to conclude okay, thank the you, session, sir. please? Thank yeah. you, sir. Uh, just, uh, I have one, one query only. You mentioned that you can download this Anika. Is it free of cost or you have to pay something for this? Yeah, so this Anika evaluation version is, uh, you know, uh, free of cost. So whereas uh, commercial one, uh, so that is, uh, you know, people uh, buy and uh, set up. So it's just with months of welcome. Evaluation copy is free. Uh, whereas okay. this Fogba that I mentioned, it is an open source software. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, there are many other things like cloud sim simulator for cloud computing and iFoxim for uh, simulating edge and for computing. The people who are doing research, especially PhD student in computer science, they can go for it. Those are the open source free software. Okay. But Aneka is a commercial product. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much for your wonderful question answering session. Now, may I request all the participants to unmute and big hand for uh, Professor Raskumar Bhuya. Just unmute all and let us have a uh, uh, clapping for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.